My next guests are very good friends of mine who are also good friends of Elvis Presley. And that makes me Elvis's good friend, <laughs> once removed. Would you please give a royal welcome to the king of TV game shows and his queen, Wink and Sandy Martindale. You know, I don't always get to say welcome back, but when we have guests that we just adore, it's such a privilege to have those guests back. And oh. your guests that we adore, and we're so happy to have you back. Thanks for joining us Thank again. you. We enjoyed it so much last time, and everybody here is so warm and friendly, and you always have such great audiences. We do. <laughs> There's something that, you know, about people who are able to host uh, game shows. They seem to be people who love life, who are happy. These are not the miserable uh, entertainment people. They really aren't. I mean, I, I think of, you know, the Pat Sajaks and uh, Chuck Woolery and, and, and so many people that they just seem to be having a good time in life. Why is it that people who host shows like that are having more fun? I think most of us, and I think I speak for Alex and Pat and all the rest of them, uh, we're people persons. Yeah. I like people. I love that, that, that 30 or 40 seconds when a new contestant comes out and you're, uh, you're bound and determined to get the very best comments out of them because that's going to make them look good, it's going to make me look good, and it's going to give us a good show. But I just love working with people and always have. By the way, I uh, had the pleasure just recently, uh, two weeks ago, of uh, giving Alex Trebek the Daytime Emmy for Best Game Show Host. What a great thrill. And he's battling a very serious illness now. Yes, so that he is. had to have been a personal joy to be able to, to be there to honor him. Somebody asked me, where did you come up with the name Wink? And I said, well, Alex was already taken. <laughs> so I, I had to settle with Wink. <laughs> you and our own Keith Bilbrey share an honor. Both of you are in the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame. Yes, indeed. You're a Tennessee native. Yeah, I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, born and raised there. And uh, got in radio when I was 17 years old and worked my way into Memphis and then out to L.A. And uh, now here I am working my way up to the Huckabee Show. <laughs> I love it. So I love it. You're here. And the last time, it must be the last time I wore this suit because I looked, I said, Wink, look at the little button. It's the ten when he got the Tennessee Hall it, it, of It yeah. is the button from yeah. the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame. Yes, it yeah. is. I said, well, I guess that's when I wore this. It's a great honor to be a part of the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, we're so proud of Keith Bilbrey because he knows everybody in the business. He's a, an amazing guy. He's our announcer. And I want our audience to join me in saying <laughs> thanks to Keith. You had a miraculous, and I say miraculous because it's just a stunning uh, recording. Millions of sold. Uh, and it's a very powerful story called Deck of Cards. Yes. How did that come into your hands in life? Well, it's uh, interesting, uh, Governor. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to listen every night to the radio to Gene Nobles on WLAC here in Nashville. He did a program called Randy's Record Shop. Hmm. Randy was Randy Wood, who owned Randy's Record Shop not down the street here in Gallatin, Tennessee. Just next door yes. to Andersonville where we are. And so I, that's where I bought my first records as a seven or eight year old kid. Hmm. And fade to black and come up on years later and I meet Randy Wood on my teenage dance party in Memphis. He was a guest on my show and uh, I had made a local record. That's when we all thought that we could be the next Elvis Presley. <laughs> so a little company there in Memphis had made a record with me, a singing record. And uh, I, uh, I sang it that day on my show, and Randy liked it well enough to say, would you like to be on DOT? And I said, are you kidding? Huh. He said, no, he bought my contract, signed me up, <clears throat> and uh, he said, I'll look for something for you to record. We won't be in a hurry. So in the summer of 1959, uh, we went into a studio and recorded this story about a soldier who used a deck of cards in church because he didn't have a Bible. Hmm. And... Uh, I remember thinking, gee, who's going to buy a semi-religious talking record when Mac the Knife, Stagger Lee, <laughs> and Venus were all the hits of the day? Because kids buy records. Yeah. But sure enough, they put it out by September. It was a hit. In November, we got a call from the Ed Sullivan people to come back to New York and do it on the Ed Sullivan Show. And as they say, the rest is history. You will do it for us, won't you, Wink? I you thought you'd to... never ask. I'm asking now. So. <laughs> all right, as Wink gets ready to perform the Afghanistan deck of cards, Keith has a little more info on the king of game shows.
You can find all Wink's records, books, memories, and more at winkmartindale.org. That's winkmartindale.org.